Despite repeated attempts by Sergeant Stein to try to halt the process, a panel voted three to zero last week to recommend that he be discharged from the military, a, a move that would render him ineligible for his veterans' benefits. Marine Sergeant Gary Stein joins me this morning. He's with his attorney, Gary Creep. Uh, he's the executive director for the United States Justice Foundation. Gentlemen, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for being with me. Um, uh, Sergeant, why don't we start with you? Um, you, you were ruled uh, unanimously in this uh, administration separation board that you be uh, discharged. Why do you disagree with what they've decided three to zero? I believe it was more based on a personal opinion of the three members than it was based on the legalities of the case. Uh, they denied four expert witnesses that were there to talk about the legalities. They didn't even want to hear them or take written testimony from them. And they, they've uh, based this on personal opinion, nothing about the legal aspects. So I'm going to read a little bit of some of the things that you posted to your uh, Facebook page, because you have a, a personal page that you posted to. One, you called um, uh, President Obama a domestic enemy. We have that up there. Uh, another one where you wrote, and I'm not going to read this whole thing because there's a word that I wouldn't use in it, but um, you said this, as an active duty Marine, I say that word, Obama. Uh, and, and they say that the post specifically violated the Uniform Code of Military Justice, Article 134, which basically says uh, you neglect the prejudice of good order and discipline in the armed forces. Are they wrong about that? I mean, you're, you're, a, you're a Marine. Are you supposed to be writing those kinds of things? And much, much more, by the way, about the person who's your commander in chief, sir? Well, first of all, let's talk about those comments. Those comments were made on a, made on a closed forum. Uh, they were up for uh, five minutes, which we found out through testimony at the hearing, and only three people saw them. In fact, the only reason that anybody has a picture of those posts or knows what those posts are is because a... Uh, a Marine Master Sergeant decided he was going to take a, ca a screen capture and send it out to God knows who, everybody he could. That's the reason it's out there. Like I said, it was on a closed forum. So Three you, people saw it. It was up for less than five minutes. Or you could argue that the reason it's out there is because you wrote it. I mean, you're not denying that you wrote it. Well, so I guess ultimately well, my question is, right. right, so are, are you arguing that it's your free speech right to be able to write something about that, about the Commander of Chief when you're an active duty Marine? Now, I do believe that my words were somewhat tasteless, and I, and I could have used better words, and I agree with that. But at the same point, the principle behind it, or the thoughts behind it, thinking that the policies that the president has put forth in the last three and a half years have been crippling our economy, that's my personal opinion as Gary Stein, and is my every right to say that. So let's turn to your uh, attorney for a moment, because obviously uh, your goal is going to be uh, the next hearing in which you're going to try to argue that his First Amendment, your, your client, Sergeant Stein's First Amendment rights have been, have been violated. What, what are you going to argue? He says he wrote it, probably was, it was tasteless, could have used better words, and he is an active duty uh, member of the, the Marine Corps. What, how are you going to argue this? Well, first of all, contrary to popular belief, Marines members of the Army, all members of the Armed Forces do not give up the First Amendment rights. But let's look at this from a slightly different point of view. This is not just a First Amendment case. According to the manual, the Marine Corps Punishment Manual, Sergeant Stein cannot be discharged for what he did. And that's part of the evidence that we tried to submit to the tribunal. We had uh, Brig uh, retired Brigadier General Brahms from the U.S. Marine Corps. He was, form he was the top judge advocate. He was the judge advocate to the commandant of the Marine Corps. And he came to testify that under the code sections they were charging him with, they had no power to discharge him. And that appears to be undisputed. What they did is they took a rule that applies only to officers, not to non-commissioned officers, but only to commissioned officers, and said, well, this rule applies, and so we think it should apply to non-commissioned officers as well, even though it doesn't. So we're going to kick him out for that. So they violated their own rules. They violated their own procedures. So there's another rule, they, though. Basic... There's another rule. Let's talk about this one. It's called Directive 1344.10, and I'm sure you know it far better than I do. Um, but it says that uh, a member of the armed forces on active duty shall not allow or cause to be published partisan political articles, letters, or endorsements signed or written by the member that solicits votes for or against a political, partisan political party, candidate, or cause. This is referring to the uh, Armed Forces Tea Party that your client is an administrator of, correct? So wouldn't that be a direct violation? So that would be a second thing, personal Facebook page for him, and then this one as well. 
Well, no, because that was reviewed by uh, uh, attorneys for the Marine Corps a couple of years ago, and they told him it was fine. All they said is they had to put up a disclaimer, which he did immediately, that said this was not uh, a, a part of the Marine Corps. He was not representing the Marine Corps in his statements, and they were his own personal statements. So that was fine. Let me ask a question of Sergeant Stein, which doesn't uh, go knee-deep in the law, but just goes knee-deep in, in your job as a Marine. I, I thought that members of the military are... are are supposed to protect and, and serve no matter who is the commander-in-chief or are supposed to do their jobs and and take orders from the commander-in-chief and do it uh, with honor regardless of their political beliefs in that commander-in-chief is, is am i wrong about that that as a marine you're there to protect well, america is that is that wrong well, no I'm, I'm i'm here to protect the constitution i'm here to uh, uphold and defend the constitution against all enemies foreign and domestic and i never disobeyed an order i was never told to take down armed forces tea party i was never told to do media not to do any media interviews i was never told uh not to write on redstate.com so i was never you, told you talk, not to do my own so personal i was never told that when you call the president an enemy of the state i mean that seems to me to go over the line you don't think so so, so Dad, if, uh, if, I, if I could just interject, I think that what it comes down to is, for instance, one of the witnesses had, uh, w when they were talking about this, had a post on their Facebook page that it clearly, one of the witnesses against Sergeant Stein, that clearly violated this directive. Clearly. That's okay. There was a part of the Obama re uh, website in 2008 that solicited the endorsement of active members of the military. That means that all of those people under these proceedings could have been, could be kicked out because that's what they're saying. Uh, probably and, could and have that, been under that, that directive. directive. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. But, but I, that, I, would, I guess as a, a, a person who is not in the military, I, my understanding was always that when it comes to the military, we shouldn't be particularly partisan. That you would expect people in yes. the military to to not um, say one way or the other and 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 follow the the orders of the commander in chief. I think that that's you know one of the things that I find sort of disturbing about this this case, honestly. I think what you have to remember though is a Tea Party, which the Armed Forces Tea Party page that I run. Tea Party is bipartisan by nature. The Tea Party itself has gone after Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, libertarians. It's gone after everybody. So you can't sit there. And we, you know, we have ACLU working on our side in this case. And they've even come out and said the Tea Party is bipartisan. The Tea Party is bipartisan, not partisan. And you will not find bipartisan in DOD 1344.10. Well, your and hearing's coming up. 13... Well, well, your, um, forgive me for interrupting you there. I just wanted to ask you, what no, do you think okay. your chances are? Your hearing's uh, coming up. If if you lose this hearing, you you know, there's a good chance you could be dishonorably, dis very good chance, excellent chance. You will be dishonorably discharged from the military. Well, it's not dishonorably, it's less than honorably, and there is there's a difference. It may be a subtle one, but there's a difference. Okay. But if we lose the hearing on Friday, is which is it? a definite is the possibility, uh, no, we'll, we're going to be filing with the Ninth Circuit. The federal court judge hearing this matter has um, uh, expressed a marked uh, uh, unwillingness to protect the rights of Sergeant Stein and has urged us to go up to the Ninth Circuit. And on Monday or so, if we lose on Friday, on Monday, we'll be before the Ninth Circuit. Marine Sergeant Gary Stein joining us, and Gary Creep as well, of the Executive Director of the United States Justice Foundation. Thanks for talking with us. Appreciate the time this morning. And no problem. Have a great morning. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless. Bye-bye. You too. Thank you. Wow. Still, I don't know. I just... I, I'm stunned by that, honestly. I, I find that very surprising. You say you to, do, to defend the Constitution, foreign and domestic, and you call the President of the United States a domestic threat, you have a problem. If you want to support him, go on your Facebook page and insult your boss and see how uh, he likes it.